Light pollution is one of the biggest problems we face in astrophotography, and unfortunately it's only getting worse every single year. So in this video, I'll give you guys a few tips that can actually reduce the light pollution permanently in your own neighborhood. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I know a fast way to remove those lights, but the problem with that approach is that they're just gonna repair the lights anyway and you might have to deal with the cops. What I wanna show you guys today are some legal ways that will permanently reduce that light pollution. Before we get started though, I wanna give you guys a bit of a background on how I even got into this whole thing. A couple months ago, my girlfriend and I attended a local astronomy club meeting and they just happened to have a guy from darksky.org there who gave a great presentation. And in that presentation, he explained some of the troubles with light pollution and how to solve it, which I'll be sharing with you guys today. And thanks to that presentation, I finally realized that there are ways to solve this problem. All right, let's start off with street lights because this could actually be the easiest thing to fix. What you wanna do is take a walk in your neighborhood and find any lights that are actually shining onto your house or on your astro equipment at night. Then you wanna look at the poles and see if there's any identifying numbers on them. In my case, we had some numbers as you can see here, and that was very helpful because what I can do now is find the local power company, give them a call and say, hey, I have a problem with this street light, here's the number. The problem is it's shining directly in my bedroom at night, it's affecting my quality of life, and there's a lot of light trespass. Those are all really critical things to tell them. Because if you just call up and say, hey, turn those lights off, I'm trying to do astrophotography, there's a good chance they're not really gonna care. Although maybe they will. But uh, if you stress that it's affecting your quality of life, there's light trespass, it's shining in your bedroom, now they're much more likely to react. And that's what I did back in September, about September 20th actually, I gave them a call. I gave them the number of the light. And I said, hey, can you guys please install a cutoff shield? This light's just driving us crazy. And they said they could, but the problem is we have an HOA here that wanted them installed, the street lights that is. And they were worried that if they went out and installed a cutoff shield, they may get a lot of calls from angry neighbors and they don't wanna to have to deal with that. So the lady that I was talking to said, look, if you can call the HOA and explain it, and the HOA can give me a call and confirm that it's okay, we'll go ahead and install the light cutoff shield. So the following morning I called my HOA, I explained the same issue to them that I did to the power company, and they said, sure, no problem, we'll give them a call. Then uh, about a week went by, nothing happened, so I called the power company back and they said, well, we never heard from the HOA. To make a long story short, eventually on November 6th, a guy was knocking on our door saying, hey, uh, what light did you want the cutoff shield installed on? Which was crazy, it took almost two months, but it finally happened. So I went in the backyard, I showed the guy from the power company the issue, and basically there was a light over 100 yards away that was shining directly on our house, which was my whole problem to begin with. Why should a street light that was designed to illuminate a few mailboxes be blinding me over 100 yards away? That's ridiculous. And that's why I was so fed up with that particular light. And I'm sure a lot of other people in the neighborhood were tired of it as well. They just didn't even realize they can do anything about it. So after I confirmed that that was the problem light, I walked over to the light with the guy and he showed me the light cutoff shield they were gonna use. And I was a bit dismayed, honestly, because it looked like just some cheap piece of metal and it wasn't even large enough or round enough to cover the entire light. And after talking with the power guy, he said, you know, this is a fairly common request. And, you know, probably 50% of the people want more lights, 50% don't want any lights. So it wasn't that unusual for me to call and complain about it. And he also told me he doesn't really care one way or the other because he's getting paid, which was a good point. So I stood out there with him and watched him install the cutoff shield and I ran back to the house to confirm it actually worked. And while it does block most of the light, I would say 60%, it's still not quite perfect, which was my initial concern. That light pollution cutoff shield that they produced from the company was not very good. So just to recap, if you have some problem street lights, go find the corresponding number on the pole, write it down or take a photo of it, call your local power company, be sure to stress that it's shining in your bedroom or affecting your quality of life, and ask if they can install a light cutoff shield. At that point, they will either say sure, no, or in my case, contact your HOA and have them call us. But based on my experience, I think most companies will be fine with it. You know, it doesn't really matter to them one way or the other. So it's worth a shot. And then with any luck at all, they'll be out there within a month to have that installed. And that light should no longer be as much of a problem as it is now. Before we continue on, I wanted to share what I found about the lights in my neighborhood because this is actually very disconcerting. When I was out there taking a look at the lights, I took a photo with my smartphone and I noticed a name printed on the bottom of the light. It said Evie Luma. 
So I did some research, I found their website, and to my surprise, they actually pride themselves on minimizing light pollution. In fact, they're even partnered and promoted to some degree by darksky.org. And what I'm getting at here is if you go on darksky.org, you'll see that for a proper light, it should be facing downwards, not shining out. Because let's think about this. If you have a light that's shining outwards, it's gonna be blinding everybody driving by or walking by or even sitting in their house at night. Let's say you're afraid of getting robbed at night or something. In that case, if you have a bright light that's blinding you, you're not gonna see somebody lurking in the shadows. But if that light is properly installed and the light is only shining downwards and you don't have a giant glare in your face, now you can see in the dark much better. It's the same principle as if you're out there doing astro at night and somebody shines their headlamp right in your face, you're not gonna be able to see everything going on in the background. And this brings us right back to darksky.org because they have a lot of very helpful articles that will explain how to reduce the light pollution in your neighborhood. And it's always a great idea to start with your own house because while I'm guessing most of us have already looked into this, there's a chance that some of our lights need to be improved. And I will have a pinned comment down below so you have links to all of the relevant articles that I found and that'll help to speed things up because I will say there are a ton of articles here on darksky.org It'd be hard to find exactly what you need. And as they show here, this is exactly my problem. When you have lights that are glaring out, it's very distracting, but if they're just pointing down, no big deal. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this article, look at the difference between an unshielded light and a shielded light. The main difference being that the trees are no longer lit up like Times Square. And this corresponds pretty well with that light near my house. When it was unshielded, it was just blasting light everywhere. Then once they installed the proper light cutoff shield, it definitely helped. I mean, there's definitely still some light pollution here that needs to be fixed, but overall, that's still a lot better. All right, now that we've talked about street lights, let's focus on your neighbor's lights, which might be driving you crazy. If your neighborhood is anything like mine, you probably have some neighbors with some very bright lights, which can be incredibly aggravating. For example, here at the new house, anytime we walk by the front windows, the neighbor's lights are just blinding. And not only is that a problem for us living here, but for doing astrophotography, that can be a real challenge. Now, my first inclination would be to go over and knock those lights out with a slingshot or a baseball bat or something else. But of course, that's not legal, and then you bring in all kinds of problems. So this is another place where the darksky.org website had some good tips. So here's what you want to do. Set up your gear one night where the neighbor's lights will be a problem, and then invite them over. Say, hey Fred, I've got my gear set up tonight. I'm gonna to be photographing Orion. Come check it out, it looks really cool. And with any luck at all, they'll come over. And when you're showing them the photos, make sure that they realize just how annoying their lights are. And in many cases, they'll be like, oh, I didn't even realize this was a problem, hold on. Let me go tell my wife to shut them off or I'll go shut them off real quickly. And that's probably the best way to prevent this problem moving forward. Because now they realize what you're doing, they realize what a problem their own lights are, and they're gonna be much more willing to make some concessions. And we have to remember that most of our neighbors don't realize how annoying their lights are. So if you go over there and start yelling at them to turn them down, they'll think you're crazy. This is why it's so important to invite them over kindly, try to show them something in the night sky where you know their lights are gonna be an issue, and let them discover it on their own. Another good trick might be to point something out that's above their house, whether that's a constellation, or a galaxy, or a satellite, and as they're struggling to see what you're talking about, Maybe then it will hit them that their lights are a problem. Another approach is to maybe bake some cookies or something and bring those over and say, hey, by the way, tonight we're gonna have a clear night. And if you guys want, I'm gonna be taking some really cool photos of a distant galaxy, you wanna come check it out? And then you could do the same tactic that I just told you. And the whole point of this approach is that you're nicely inviting them over and they're discovering the problem on their own without you ever having to say anything, that's the key. You could also advise them on how to install a light cutoff shield and say, hey, I don't mind you having lights, but..." Is there any way we can make it so it's not shining out horizontally? And then at that point, you can explain how the glare is a serious issue, not only for your astrophotography, but for animals as well. A lot of birds are being killed because they're getting confused at night by all these lights. There's a lot of different ways you can approach it if you know how your neighbors think. And maybe if you've got the funds for it, you can even find the lights that they're using, buy some light cutoff shields and say, hey, if you don't mind, I can just help you install it for you and that would make things better for everybody and be able to go for that as well. I will say though that if you're like me, this is gonna be the more troublesome route to go down just because you have to deal with your neighbors now. Whereas at least with the power company, they don't really care one way or the other, they'll just do it. 
unless the HOA is giving them trouble most likely. So that's all I've got for you today. We've talked about how to deal with light pollution in your own neighborhood. I've shared some of the experiences that worked well for me. And moving forward, I'd recommend you check out darksky.org for even more information that you can share with your neighbors and the power company if they need some more convincing. And finally, before we go, if you try any of these techniques, leave a comment down below and let us know how it went. I think it'd be cool to see how people approach the situation and what works for them and what doesn't. So be sure to write down your success stories below or in the event it fails, at least we'll have some information on what not to do. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope these tips help you out and together we can lower the amount of light pollution in the world one light at a time.